you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. As you're going there, um, we have a lot to do. We're going to do communion at the end of the service, so don't leave. And it's going to be a great time of common union. Um, but I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and share with you the word of the Lord that the Lord gave to me for the entrance of 2024. And I know that God's going to speak to you emphatically. And uh, you're going to receive revelation knowledge today. There's something about revelation that is powerful. Revelation is very akin to illumination. It's like somebody turned the light on. How many of you know you could read something a hundred times and then read it one time and the light comes on? And that's kind of what happened to me with this passage of scripture as we were going over into 2024. And that's why I'm so excited to share it with you today. 1 Corinthians chapter number 16, verse 1. Now concerning the, the collection for the saints as I've given orders to the churches of Galatia, so must you do also. You're talking like a bishop, isn't he? On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Now, this, that's a real preacher right there. I'm going to come and preach to y'all, and I don't want to have to take time to receive offerings. So y'all take care of that before I get here. That's what he said right here. That's bold. I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. But if it is fitting that I go also, they will go with me. And I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia. And it may be that I will remain. Well, this here is good stuff. Or even spend the winter with you. I may take a season and just be with you. That you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you on the way. But I hope to stay a while with you. Tell me that won't preach. I don't want to just see you when I'm passing by. I want to hang out with you. If the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is opened unto me. And there are many adversaries. And there are many adversaries. The Amplified uh, Version reads that on this wise. Because a wide door for effective service has opened to me in Ephesus. A very promising, say this word, opportunity. And there are many adversaries. I'm going to preach today this message entitled, Looking for My Door in 24. I need you to say that to four people around you. Find four people and say, I'm looking for my door in 24. <clears throat> now let's lift our hands, please. Father, we love you today and we approach you with clean hands and a pure heart. And there's no greater feeling in the world than the feeling of saying, with you when you stated these words Satan has nothing in me mm. what a great feeling Lord for us to be able to say Satan has nothing on us now with that being said and declared and decreed we break any tie that is evil yes we snap any rope that has tied us to a deed of darkness. We break every generational curse today. I said we break every generational curse today and we dismiss any generational spirit that is not of God. Father, have your way today. Speak powerfully and prophetically to us. Let it come to us as an apostolic announcement for our destiny. And we give you praise right now for all you have done. We thank you for what you're doing. And we are just crazy to think about the things you are going to do for us. So we're going to give you a pre-praise right now for everything you're going to do in 24. One more time before you sit down, clap your hands and shout to God with a voice of triumph. High five somebody and tell them it's only in the building. Let me just, before I get into my, you may be seated, let me, let me, let me go off what I feel in my spirit right now. Let me just, let me just go off uh, from what I feel in my spirit right now. I heard this very strong in praise and worship, and the word uh, was this, do not settle. Do not settle. 
And, and I'm going to reiterate what the Holy Spirit spoke to me and tell you, do not settle. Do not settle for where you are. Do not settle for what has happened. Do not settle in that God may not do anything else for you. No. I'm here to tell you your best is yet to come. Listen, if you choose to settle, you operate in modes of complacency, which means you meander in modes of mediocrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? In other words, you will rest and you won't push. Listen, it's time for us to push like we've never pushed in the spirit before. Can you say amen to that? I want you to consider these five words. It is a new year. Say it again. It is a new year. It is a new year, which means you have a fresh start. Man, I'm feeling this thing here already. I'm sorry. Remember, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of 2023. <laughs> Behold, I am doing a, a new thing. Now it springs forth. Will you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. All through scripture, it's super easy to see that numbers are important to God. I'm going to rush through this because I know you got a lot to do at the end here. Names are important to God. Times and seasons are important to God. The calendar throughout scripture was important to the people of God. It is filled with Scripture's filled with dates for festivities, for holy events. A new year is important to God. If a new year is important to him, it should be important to you. Most folks just look at a year, a new year as, okay, it's just another day. It's another day if you say it's just another day. But if you say it's a new year, then you're saying something unexpected is going to happen this year. Something great is going to happen this year. Can you say amen to that? So now that we've closed the door, and I pray you have, that you close the door on 2023. Don't you carry that baggage from 23 into 24. Don't carry that relationship that is not of God from 23 into 24. Hold on. Let me break a soul tie here real quick. There's some people you're playing with that are dangerous. Don't carry that relationship over into 2024. Make a commitment to the year. Make a commitment to the year. 365 days of serving the Lord with all you have. No matter the discouragement, no matter the pitfalls, no matter the failures, no matter the disappointments, no matter the detours, make a commitment. You are going to serve God 365 days in 2024. Say this with me. I will walk through every day of 2024 committed to Christ committed to his kingdom and committed to his church. If you're going to do it, give God one more praise before we get in the message here. Y'all ain't praising God. If you'll praise him, something will fall off you that ain't supposed to be there. Bless your name, Jesus. And I feel something moving. I feel some motion here real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Now let us look at it real quick. 1 Corinthians 16, 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. The word door is mentioned 189 times in Scripture. The word door is found in 173 verses in the Bible. Door. 173 verses in Scripture. I wrote this down in prayer this morning, Pastor D. I've never said these words before. I believe that our destiny is shaped by, by the doors we walk through and by the doors we walk by. I believe our destiny is shaped by the doors we walk through and the doors we walk by. 
Every door you encounter requires a decision. Hmm. Every door that you encounter requires a decision. Will I walk through it or will I walk past it? It takes spiritual discernment to make the right decision to walk through the right door. You should pray every day this year, Lord, give me discernment to be able to know a right door mm, from a wrong door. The first mention of the word door in scriptures in relation to missing the mark. Lord have mercy. Genesis 4, 7, God speaks to Cain and he says these words, if you do the wrong thing, if you do not do the right thing, sin is lurking at your door. Hmm. Now this tells us something, that if we are doing the right thing, we will go through the right doors. But if you're not doing the right thing, the opportunity to miss the mark, sin is lurking at your door. Sin is the consequence of behavior. Lord Jesus. Satan invites sin to wait for you to make a wrong decision. The word door is so important that Jesus himself says in John chapter 10 and verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pasture. Woo. Before I go any further, the second time, this is not in my notes. That we find the word door is when Noah builds an ark. And when he builds that ark, he builds it by divine instruction, divine detail from how long it is to how tall it is to how wide it is to how many windows it has in it to the point that he says, make one door to get into the ark. There's only one door to get into the ark of safety. Jesus said, I am that door. Now for the sake of exclusivity, not inclusion, exclusivity, let me just decree and declare a thing in this sanctuary. In this church, we do not believe that there are many doors to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man goes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. So before you get it twisted in a perverted generation, let me help you fix your mind and your conviction. You ain't going any other way unless you go through the door that's called Jesus Christ. Hmm. I better move on because I wear that thing thin. David said these words. I would rather be a doorkeeper than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. I would rather hang out at the door of the house of God than to dwell in the tents of evil. The door. <laughs> For a great door. The word door here, Pastor D, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 9, and the Greek means these, these terms, the opening, the passage. Here, here you go. The transition from the vestibule into the room. Hmm. I don't know 
know about you, but I've walked in some buildings that the foyer blew my mind. I've walked in lobbies that said, good God, if the lobby looked like this. <laughs> what does the CEO's office look like? There are some foyers that are so beautiful, some lobbies that are so gorgeous, you could just hang out in there. And many of them have refreshments and things for you to enjoy while you're in the waiting process. As a matter of fact, some vestibules are so comfortable that you start thinking to yourself, I don't even need to go into the main room, I'm enjoying this room right here. And as I was preparing this message, uh, I preached this, some of this at our church last week. I added a bunch for y'all. Thank you, Pastor Rick. You're welcome. <laughs> that you can stand in the foyer and you can hear what's going on in the sanctuary, but you can't see it. There's a feeling in the foyer of anticipation. And four years are beautiful and lobbies are wonderful. But until you walk through the door from the foyer to the sanctuary, you can't enjoy the essence of the presence. You can hear the celebration, but you're not in the celebration. And the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that, that if you want to get into your future, you got to come out your foyer. That you're about to come out of the vestibule of your vision into the reality of your vision. You're about to transition from just hearing about it to actually living in it. And for too long, preachers have dangled carrots in front of you like you're chasing something you ain't never going to catch. But Pastor Rick came by to tell you 24 is the year for your door. And you're fixing to catch what God has been showing you for a very long time. Second Kings chapter 4 is such a beautiful chapter. It's a chapter about a prophet named Elisha who has a servant with him named Gehazi. And the lady that they run into is a Shunammite woman who has now built a room onto her house for the prophet. She made room for prophecy. The Bible says she recognized that he was a prophet. So she made room for him. You'll always make room for things you respect and things you recognize. You rarely make room for people you don't respect. And she built a room onto her house for him. And the Bible says he continually passed by until one day she said to her husband, we should invite him in. They invited him in and he rested in his room and he looked at Gehazi and said these words, find out what the woman wants. The Bible says Gehazi went out and looked at the Shunammite woman and came back to Elisha and says she does not have a son. She never asked for anything. I learned something from that passage of scripture. Prophecy always gravitates towards service. A word concerning your future will always gravitate toward people who are doing something with their now. I'm not receiving any prophetic word. You ain't doing nothing. When you serve, prophecy looks you down. Prophecy recognizes what you do not have. You do not even have to ask for it because prophecy will see what you lack it. And as soon as the servant Gehazi told Elisha that, Elisha said, call her. And he called her. And the Bible says she immediately stood in the door. Woo. I came by to scream at you today. 
Get in the door. Quit playing in the rooms of yesteryear. Quit playing and dabbling in spheres of your past history. Get in the door and peer into your prophetic destiny with anticipation like God is about to do something he has never done before. In Genesis 15, God comes to speak to Abraham and in Genesis 15, the Bible says Abraham is in the center of his tent. But in Genesis 18, when he comes back the second time, you know where God finds Abraham? In the door of his tent. Because when you've heard enough prophetic words about your future, you don't settle for the room. You want to remain in the threshold. You want to remain in the position of something great is about to happen. I wish I had 10 people that could hear this word here. So when the Apostle Paul is concluding his first letter to the church at Corinth, he says, I'm coming for a visit. And when I do come, I want to hang out with you at least for a season. He said, but right now, I'm in Ephesus, and an opportunity has presented itself. What did I just say? Has presented itself. And I must make the most of it. He chooses this vocabulary very wisely. Because he does not say an opportunity, he says a door. A great door, not just any door, but a great door and effectual door has opened to me. An opportunity has presented itself to me. A door that is first of all a great door. Now, I'm fixing to wreck your world. Amen. Amen. Now, before I get done, I'm going to put your world back together for you. Big dreams require big thinkers. Small dreams attract small thinkers. Small thinkers always cause trouble. Big dreams require big thinkers. Small dreams attract small thinkers. And small thinkers always cause trouble. Before you share your big dream with anybody, check their thinking. How do you know their thinking, Pastor Rick? Listen to their talking. Their mouth will tell you where their mind is. When I tell you I'm going to wreck your world, I'm going to wreck small things in your life and tell you to quit settling for the small when you can enjoy the big. Last week in our church, I told our people, shake the small stuff out your head. Everything that's little, get it out of your head. Think big. A great door. Pastor D, the word there in the Greek is megas, where we get the word mega. It means a great door, a large door, a mighty door. I love this. The etymology reads like this. It greatly surpasses anything of its kind. Your door <laughs> in 24 is so much bigger than any door you've ever walked through in your entire life. It greatly surpasses anything of its kind.
It means an abundant door. Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly, which means not only superior in quality, but superior in quantity. I heard the Holy Ghost say more in 24. I'm going to get about 20 people to get on this with me. More in 24. I told you when I walked up here, stop selling. Stop selling for less than what you're supposed to enjoy. Stop selling for lack. Woo! This is your year of super abundance. Pastor D, if it's a mega door. Some of y'all need to stop looking for mega bucks. One mega door can get you what 1,000 lottery tickets cannot get you. Mega door. A mega door is a door you can't miss. A mega door don't swing on hinges. I'm going to say it again. A mega door don't swing on no hinge. A mega door is a door you have to lift up. And that's why Psalm 24 says, Who shall ascend the heel of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. And he says, Be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. He said, Be ye what? Lifted up. Because eternal doors, abundant doors, mighty doors, big doors, don't swing on hinges. I came by to tell you God is about to not just pivot a door. God is about to lift a door. If he lifts a door, then it's big enough for you and everybody connected to you. In other words, the door that God is about to open for you is big enough for you to pour your children, your grandchildren, and your great-grandchildren through this door. I wish I had a church today that could hear me say a mega door in 24. Tell your neighbor, I ain't looking for no little door. I done been through plenty of small doors. I done been through plenty of normal doors. This door is not any normal door. This door is a, a mega door. Woo, if anybody in this building looking for a mega door in 24, give God praise. I think I'm going to stay right here for just a minute. Bless your name, Jesus. Tell somebody I'm looking for a mega door. I'm not looking for a mini door. I'm not looking for a small door. I'm not looking for a normal door. I'm looking for a mega door. God is about to open a door big enough for me to drive a Mack truck through it. God is about to open a hangar big enough to put a jet in. God is about to do something so big that it's going to blow your mind. Tell your neighbor big, big, think big, dream big, talk big, pray big. There's a mega door. See, your past will convince you that every passage is small, that everything takes so much work. No. God's about to drop a mega door in your future. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prophesy a place for life right now that this is your year for a mega door. Multitudes. Multitudes. High five three people and tell them I'm looking for my mega door in 24. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Y'all thought I was done. No, we're just getting started. That was the introduction. Shout it one more time. Mega door. Watch here. He says a great door, mega door, and effectual door is open unto me. Whew. A mega door and effectual door. The word effectual in the Greek is energes, where you get the word energy. 
Y'all just missed that. Effectual door, energize. Where you get the English word energy. Energy. Something that is forceful, active, powerful, and effective. Woo. Here's how your exegesis works. You ready? Here's how it works. As the door opened, it created a divine release of God's power to the one who is passing through it and to those whom he is sent. Let me say it again. When the door is dropped out of eternity into time, it's big enough that you can't miss it. When you walk through that door, the door releases to you divine power. The door energizes you. This is called optimism. Optimism produces momentum. If you get through one big old door that you never dreamed of passing through in your life, then you start expecting every door to be a big door. That's why you should never shake hands with people lightly. Some of the wealthiest people you know in the world have holes in the bottom of their shoes. They do that to fool you. Don't ever shake a hand like it don't count. Never make the mistake of discounting any door. One door, let's get our coffee and stuff now. One door can open up to you stuff you never dreamed of before. When you get the revelation of what I'm talking about, you will start looking at people as doors and you will stop looking at people as problems. Then you will then begin to realize is this a door I want to deal with or walk by? Some of you are where you are because you got in the wrong room. You entertained the wrong door and it got you tangled up in a mess. The only way, Lord have mercy, for you to get out that mess is to look at the door that got you involved and tell them, I'm sorry. I've got to cut you off, throw away the key. And as soon as you do, as soon as you do, when one door closes, another door but it ain't going to open until you let them go. I wish I had a church that would talk back to me. So the door gives you divine power and energy. It releases the energy to the door, to the person who passes through the door, watch this, and to those whom he is sent. Until you go through, they will never feel it. This convicted me in Norman, Oklahoma. Because God began to deal with me and tell me, boy, I know you're a happy man, but that don't mean you have to be a settled man. <laughs> I know you're a satisfied man, but that don't mean you need to be a settled man. And then I heard the Holy Ghost say, build something. I said, hold on, Holy Ghost. Wait a minute now. I got a baby and a young wife. And we're talking about energy here now. <laughs> Y'all ain't feeling me today. Uh, we're talking about energy. And we got a three-year-old we're chasing and a uh, 40-something-year-old we're chasing. And you're going to tell me now, go on, build? Hold on just a second. And God said, son, let me tell you something. When you walk through this mega door in 24, you're going to have the spirit of Caleb. And Caleb said, I might be 80 years old, but I'm as strong right now as I was when I was 40 years old. And I came by to tell you, if you'll get through the door, you'll have so much energy in your life. You'll say, give me not one mountain, give me every mountain that belongs to me. Oh, Jesus.
If you lift your hands, I'll pray for divine energy for you right now. Lord, fill us full of vigor. Fill us full of zeal. Fill us full of strength. Fill us full of energy until we look at every door and say every door that I pass through is infusing me with more energy. Hallelujah. I dare you to look at three people and tell them, run on, run on. Write the vision and make it plain that he who sees it may run with it. It takes energy to run. It don't take a lot of energy to walk, but it takes a lot of energy to run. And God told me to tell you the door you're about to go through is going to make you run like you've been wearing running shoes your whole life. I dare you to shout to God if you believe you're about to run on. Tell your neighbor I'm about to pick up pace. My cadence is about to speed up. I feel divine energy in this door right here. This door in 24 is giving me energy that I never felt before. You can't have divine energy without divine joy. And that's why David said, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Why? Because Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is your energy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You you didn't lose energy you lost joy and you lost joy because of something you did but God is about to give you your joy back so you can get your energy back I dare you to act like God just filled you full the kingdom of God is righteousness peace and joy well well where in the Holy Ghost you can't have real joy until you get the Holy Ghost I dare you to look at three people and tell them you looking at the Energizer Bunny baby I can't stop I won't stop I can't stop I won't stop tell them I can't stop I won't stop I got so much energy I don't know what to do I feel be 12 shot. Tell your neighbor your energy is coming back. Your joy is coming back. Woo! If you got joy, would you shout to him one more good time? The joy of the Lord is my sin joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm ready to run on. I'm ready for my race. I'm ready to pick up the pace. Energy is coming back. You're going to bounce out your bed. You're going to skip through your living room. You're going to run to your car. Let me stop this. Oh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on in here, Holy Ghost. I heard the Holy Ghost say, stop being busy and start being effective. Effectual door, power door, active door, energetic door, effective door. A lot of people mistake effectiveness for busyness. Because you're busy, don't mean you're effective. Effective people know where to spend their energy. Y'all didn't hear that there. Effective people know where to spend energy. <laughs> Busy people just throw energy everywhere. Lord, don't let me offend them too bad, please. That's how some of y'all pray. 
You just pray. But James 5, 16 says, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Not the one you mumble and pray, especially when you're in a public restaurant so everybody can see you, so you can feel good about yourself praying over your meal. Getting quiet now. The only reason you did it is so that they will come over there and say, I saw your family praying. That was so beautiful. And all you did is repeat words. You said a thousand, oh, Lord, thank you for the food. Bless our body in Jesus' name. And use our bodies for your service in Jesus' name. He ain't heard you because you were not talking to him. You was talking to your kids. I'm preaching better than you talking about to me. I'm not saying don't pray over your meal. Go ahead and pray over it. But the Bible says pray after you eat. But I'll leave that there for another time. See, you get a little nervous when I start messing with your sacred cow. Because that's the only religious thing you've done all week is pray over your meal. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man Available. If you're going to pray, pray hard. If you're going to pray, pray right. If you're going to pray, pray with fire. If you're going to pray, make your prayer effective. Don't just be throwing words in the atmosphere. Fall out on your face and call your baby's names until your tears fill your carpet, until your carpet is soaking wet. And your belly is hurting you from groaning out to God for your wife and your kids and your grandkids. Hmm. Can I finish? A great door. Just stay standing. I'll, if you stand, I'll go faster. If you sit, I'll relax and take a longer time. No, just stand. Please stand. A great door and effectual is open to me. Good Lord. You ever heard that said in San Antonio? Ay, ay, ay. Some of y'all going to get this right here. A great door and effectual is open to me. He did not say I opened it. Did y'all hear what I just said? Maybe I said it too long. A great door and effectual door is opened to me. I didn't open a door. When you walk in right, doors open for you. You don't open them. They open for you. See, here's the problem with a lot of church people. We try to open our own doors. We walk in churches like, I can sing. <laughs> we walk in church doors. I'm anointed. And you expect the pastor to go, oh, my God, we've been waiting for you for the last 10 years. <laughs> People that are always trying to open their own doors, there's a name for them. They're called opportunists. You're trying to make your own way instead of letting God make a way for you. I'm going to skip out of it. Closed the book. Because I could preach on this thing all day. He said a great door and effectual is what? Open to me. I did not open it. It opened to me. All I did was approach it. Great doors feel greatness when it approaches. You 
don't have to announce to the door, I'm here. The door recognizes you. Your gift makes room for you. I do have to find my last scripture because I don't want to just guess at it. Who's going to give me five minutes? Okay, feel y'all. A great door and effectual is open to me. All right, now watch this. And there are many adversaries. One open door does not produce one opposition. One opening has many oppositions. So if you say, man, I'm fighting this one thing, then you ain't really at a big door. But when you fighting all hell, when it, y'all ain't hearing me. When it's coming at you from every angle, you better know that right there is a good, big old mega door. If you going through a bunch of stuff, just know that you are on the threshold of a mega door. He said a great door produces many adversaries. You will never see an opening without oppositions. You'll never go through a divine door without facing devils. And the angel said, write these things. Say, he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David. Here you go. He that opens and no man shuts. And he that shuts and no man opens. I know your works. I've been watching you. And I hear the Holy Ghost telling me to tell you this, Pastor D. He's been watching you. I know what you've been dealing with. I know what you've been working with. I know your works. I have set before you an open door and no man, no adversary, no oppositions can shut it. This is your year of the open door. Now let me tell you, if you'll lift your hands, lift up your hands, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. He is the King of glory. With your hands raised, Revelation 4 says, and I looked and behold, the door was open. Will you look today? And I looked. You do not see what you are not looking for. Man. I looked. You got to look first. You'll never see what you are not looking for. I looked. And behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. And it said to me, come up here and I will show you things that must happen. God has huge doors for you. But you will never see them if you decide to stay where you are. Bishop Rick came to San Antonio to tell place for life. Come up. Come up in your thinking. Come up in your vision. Come up in your administration. Come up in your excellence. Come up in your presentation. 
come up in your language come up in your dialogue come up in your preaching come up in your singing come up in your praise come up in your worship come up go higher go to the next level do it better than you've ever done it before don't say we don't have start saying we have everything we need because everything we need is exactly what we have we have everything we need because everything we need is exactly what we have we will come up if y'all ready to go up i dare you to give god a big old praise right now come up in your marriage Come up in your marriage. Woo! I bind every devil of doubt. I close every door of distraction today. Anything that would detour your destiny now, that door is closed. In the name of Jesus. My brother, that girl that's been entertaining you that is not your wife is getting sick of you right now. In the name of Jesus, I make her sick and her stomach are even thinking about you. In the name of Jesus, I break every distraction. I bind every detour. In the name of the Lord, every door that God said he will shut, he shall shut and no man shall open. And every door that God said he's going to open, he's going to open and no man will shut it. Satan will not shut this mega door. Demons will not shut this mega door. Curses will not shut this mega door. Darkness will not shut this mega door. Deeds will not shut this mega door. Nothing's going to shut this mega door. It is your door. In